What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. And today we're going to talk about, I believe, one of the best teams in all of baseball on paper and maybe out on the field. We're about to find out what's going on with the Chicago White Sox. This is a team that finished 35 and 25 in 2020. They are absolutely freaking stacked. They have a loaded lineup with a combination of super studs in their prime like MVP Jose Abreu, Tim Anderson. They have super young prospects like Luis Robert, like Madrigal, whole bunch of other guys. The White Sox hit more home runs than any other team in the American League in 2020. And they had two starting pitchers finish in the top seven for the Cy Young. And guess what? Now they have three as they traded for Lance Lynn. And they signed one of, if not the best closers in all of baseball with Liam Hendricks. And they decided, screw it, we might as well get one of the best living managers as well. Is Casey Stengel available? No, he's passed away. What about Tony La Russa? He's still here. Let's get him. It remains to be seen how he's going to do, how he's going to connect with these younger players. But they also hired uh, some new coaches, some good young coaches like Ethan Katz as their new pitching, one of their pitching coaches. I mean, this team has just done a lot to me. I mean, they didn't do a ton of transactions, as you can see, because there wasn't the need. They were already good, but they did what they needed to to complete and fill any holes that remained in on this team and it starts with Lance Lynn an absolute workhorse high spin fastball misses bats often he is going to be joining Dallas Keuchel and Lucas Giolito like I said all three in the top seven Cy Young voting that is insane and they sign Liam Hendricks absolutely filthy borderline unhittable at times and he actually topped his 2019 ERA of 1.8 with a 1.78 ERA in 2020 and an absolutely insane 13.1 strikeout ratio both in 19 and 20. Last season, 14 saves, 37 strikeouts, and he gave up just one home run. Then coming back to the White Sox is Adam Eaton, and he was signed to be a much-needed left-handed option in that lineup. He can get on base. He has got great speed, career 282 average, and in his three seasons with the White Sox, he hit an amazing 29 triples. And also, they signed 23-year-old Yoelki Cespedes, who defected from Cuba in 2019. Five-tool talent. He'll probably start the year in the minor leagues, but if he hits well, the White Sox could bring him up at any point to play in that outfield. So the White Sox with a very strong offseason, and they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And then let's check out this lineup right here. And you can see Tim Anderson at the top. He had a 1,509 OPS against lefties last season. He can simply rake 2019 batting champion, hits everything hard, and if he hits one at the right angle, is probably going out of the ballpark. Finished seventh in the MVP voting, and he's just got all the tools that you need. And then, like I said, Adam Eaton is back, and he didn't have his best year last year, but I think if you look at some of his advanced stats, like his hard contact rate, he should be fine in 21. He still can hit the ball. And like I said, he gets on base and he's got great speed. And like I said, if he does struggle, you got Cespedes down in the minor leagues ready to jump in. And then Yasmani Grandal, who has more home runs than any other major league catcher since 2015. He is elite defensively. He throws out base runners. He can frame pitches with the best of them. He's got patience, power, defense, simply one of the best catchers in baseball. And then there's a guy you might have heard of named Jose Abreu, who he only won the MVP. Oh, yeah, they also had two guys in the top seven for MVP, three in the top seven for Cy Young. This is what we're dealing with. Abreu was on a pace for 162 RBI if 2020 was a regular length season. He is a beast. Rookie of the year, MVP, three silver sluggers, three all-star, and that's just in seven years. And then there's Eloy Jimenez, who showed big improvements in 2020 after hitting 31 bombs in 2019, bumped his average up to 296. He hit the ball harder and more often. He has 40 home run potential. And we're just talking about Eloy Jimenez. I mean, this is after you've dealt with all these other guys. This lineup is going to be amazing. And then Moncada, who had a tough 2020 after COVID-19. So he's one guy who had a down year, but he did hit 315 in 2019 with 25 home runs. I think he'll be closer to those numbers in 2021. Luis Robert, obviously amazing super speed, amazing defensive abilities. 
power. He does have some work to do. He chases too much. He will strike out a lot. But the guy's only 23. He should show improvement there. He's got 30 home run power. He was second in the rookie of the year. And he won a gold glove. So you're getting all that, if nothing else. But I think he'll be even better offensively. And then Adam Engel, another great athlete. Gold glove caliber defense. He can run like the wind. Showed great improvements at the plate over his career. He's not going to hit a lot of home runs. But guess what? The rest of the lineup is going to take care of that. So no worries there. And then finally, Nick Madrigal who hit 340 in a very small sample last year, but we already knew he could hit from his minor league career. He's got a Tony Gwynn-like ability to put the bat on the ball. He struck out only seven times in 103 at-bats in 2020. He did have shoulder surgery, so might miss opening day. I'm not really sure how that's looking, but he'll be back very soon. And they have Garcia and Mendrick to fill in. So I think that this lineup is pretty ridiculous. I haven't even mentioned... Some of the other big-time prospects like Andrew Vaughn and some other guys in the system. So they are deep and they are stacked. Insane power, MVP-like talents, on-base skills, the actual MVP, solid veterans, super prospects. Everything you'd want in a lineup is right here. And I have to give it an A+. Checking out the rotation, those top three, you can pretty much interchange those. Like I said, they were all in the top seven for 2020 Cy Young. They would all be aces on a lot of teams. Send anyone to the Giants and they'd be our automatic ace. You got Lucas Giolito, 12.1 strikeout rate in 2020, threw a no-hitter, continues to be consistently good for the White Sox over the past couple years. In over 72 innings, he gave up just 47 hits. And then you have 2020 signing. Dallas Keuchel, who consistently jammed hitters. He creates this garbage contact. He can't barrel it up against this guy. And in 11 starts and 63 innings, he gave up just two home runs. Two home runs all season, and that's it. He's also a former Cy Young Award winner, and he's also got several gold gloves. He feels his position as good as anyone. So there's that. And then Lance Lynn. Yeah, Lance Lynn with the sick fastball slider combo. With the fastball that's actually getting faster into his 30s. And his fastball and changeup are about 13 miles apart in velocity. Making them very, very difficult to hit. And then after all that, there is Dylan Cease and Carlos Rodon. And after you got to phase, you know, three top seven Cy Young candidates. Then you got to look at high 90s heat, which they both possess. And, you know, Cease elite slider and if he can improve his control a little bit which is possible he's only 25 he hasn't even pitched in a full season uh, he's also going to win a ton of games and Rodone re-signed by the Sox who I must still believe in him even though he's had major injury issues his whole career I think they want to see if he can work with Ethan Katz the new pitching coach who is credited by Giolito for turning his career around to see if he can do anything. But Rodone, obviously the guy's sick. He can hit triple digits as well. The potential is there, even though he hasn't really busted out at the big league level. But if he struggles, you got Ronaldo Lopez. you got other guys. you got Michael Kopech, who's supposed to start the season in the bullpen. The dude was legit in the minors, first round pick. And, you know, he's there. Garrett Crochet is possible. I think that he will be starting in the bullpen as well, but he is possible if they decide to give him a crack at the rotation. And uh, yeah, I mean, this rotation barring injury should be absolutely dominant. And it is amazing. I am going to give it an A only because I don't know what the fifth spot is going to look like. But, you know, someone like Kopech steps up or possibly Rodone, um, that entire rotation could also be an A+. For now, I'm going to say A. And then you jump to the bullpen. Liam Hendricks, simply one of the best, one of the most desired closers in the game. The White Sox just said, you know what, we're all in it to win it. You know, we are going to make this signing and just make this team undeniably complete. And they add him to a bullpen that was already good. Aaron Bummer was there. He would probably have been the closer. A good heart sinker. He induces a ton of ground balls. He's going to join Fry and Crochet as two other super awesome lefties there. You know, Fry's a strikeout machine as well. Crochet's hitting 100-something. And then you have your righties. Other than Hendricks, you got Evan Marshall. He has a sick moving changeup. He's got a plus curve. And then Cody Hoyer, who can touch 98. So, you know, both absolute lights out in 2020. Jimmy Cordero, another flamethrower, who struggled in 2020, but he had a 2.75 ERA back in 19. Matt Foster, another youngster, who was phenomenal in his rookie year in 2020. And um, I mentioned Kopech and Crochet and uh, everyone else. This bullpen is, is ridiculous, okay? Absolutely amazing. They did not need the best closer in baseball. Now that they have him, this is the best bullpen in baseball. 
on paper. We'll see how they do, but I'm going to give it an A+. So there you have it for the Chicago White Sox, a team that has to be considered heavy favorites to win the Central, in my opinion. Although the playoffs in baseball, you know, they're unpredictable. You never know, especially in March. I mean, who knows? But if this team stays healthy... I believe they're going to be major players deep into October. And as an overall team, I am going to give this White Sox club the only A-plus of my 30 clubs in 30 days. Chicago White Sox. You guys are freaking amazing. Absolutely stacked. You got everything. This is your year. Don't F it up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think. I know a lot of people are going to say, dude, you're way too crazy on the White Sox, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because you're probably not a White Sox fan. I'm not a White Sox fan either, but I wish I was at this point because uh, this team might be about to win a World Series. I really think they are stacked. Clearly, it's not going to be that easy. You got to face the Padres, uh, Dodgers, or whoever you got to face. You got to face other teams in the playoffs who are also going to be close to if not as stacked there's going to be injuries there's going to be it's a crazy season it's a long season it's a lot to go through on paper this is my favorite team in baseball going into 2021 so you guys have a fantastic day again hit that subscribe hit that thumbs up we'll talk to you next time see ya when the giants come to town it's bye bye baby every time the chips are down it's Bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle Park.